export manager from Brazil, and Mr. Mauricio D'Souza, who is a silage technician, who will guide us everything about silage today. So I give on to Mauricio. Mauricio, you can start your presentation. Just before we start, I think Rafael should say some words, isn't it, Rafael? Okay. Yes, um, namaste to all uh, our Indian friends. Um, my name is Rafael Prado. I work at JF Sport uh, Department. And today there is no modern dairy farm without doing silage, especially um, maize or corn silage. So um, JF and Vidata, we have been um, Talking about this concept for the last years already in India, um, our machinery is specialized in that. We are the largest manufacturer of uh, this type of machine in the world. And with the quality of our equipment, you will be able to reach uh, a good silage. Why I say good silage? Because silage is one thing, but a good silage is another thing. Okay, uh, you can make silage, but still be a bad quality silage. Okay, so today uh, our silage expert, Mr. Mauricio Souza, will talk a little bit about some hints, some information, how to make good silage. Okay, we're going to talk most of it about corn, but also a little bit about grass. Okay, so thank you, uh, and I hope you get can get some good information. Um, the questions we can answer by the end, okay? And when, if we don't get to answer all the questions, we can uh, uh, answer it later. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, well, uh, my name is Mauricio, Mauricio Souza. Uh, today we're going to, to speak a little bit about silage and some uh, good tips that we could do during the harvest, especially during the harvest, in order to improve its quality. So please let me just uh, share my screen with you. Yep. So... Today we're going to talk about some good practice for increasing silage quality. Okay, uh, we're, as Rafael said, we're going to speak a little bit uh, from corn and grass mainly, and uh, some good tips that you should uh, know in order to increase your silage quality. So, my name is Mauricio Souza. Uh, I work in, in the NB group in JF since 2009. Uh, I'm working in, in the engineering department and uh, we are developing uh, new machines, new products year after year, uh, day after day actually. And uh, the idea is to improve uh, the, the machine in order to make a better silage. Uh, okay, uh, we are away from you right now, here in Brazil. It, it would be a pleasure to be with you personally, of course, but uh, because of, of this pandemic, it's, uh, it's, that's the, the new normal, isn't it? So this is a picture of my, my little assistant in here. <laughs> Sorry if he uh, could interrupt me uh, anytime by now, but I hope so. <laughs> I hope he won't be doing it at least uh, between these next two hours, okay? So right now, we're going to, to talk about uh, a little introduction, so the advantages of using silage as, as a food, the, the factors that affect silage quality, how is silage done, uh, some corn and grass silage, uh, some difference between them, uh, good practice in harvesting and storage, and some final considerations in the end. So, uh, also, uh, just uh, as Rafael said, please take note 
from any question that you that you have uh, you can put it on the facebook and then by the end we can answer them uh, uh, by the end okay so feeding an uh, adequate amounts of high quality forage is the basis for milk production uh, silage is a great probably the greatest option to store food during all the year uh, the animals eat every day so uh, the idea in here is to have food for the entire year uh, uh, good quality food for the entire year in order to your animals produce more and more okay so silage have uh, that silage has some advantages uh, the most uh, the biggest one are the, the increased amount of energy per area, per planted area, I mean, reduced field losses, flexible harvest dates, efficient use of labor, and the, the most important of all, available food during the entire year. Independent if you are using a big silo just like this or small bags just like this. The, the, the idea is having uh, good quality food during the entire year. And these are the, the six factors, the six main factors that affect silage quality. We're going to, today we're going to talk a lot on harvest and storage, but you need a, a little bit on removal, removal as well. But you need to take sure, you need to know that there are another factors uh, there are other factors that affect their quality uh, and and uh, right now we we are going to talk a little bit uh, on them so uh, the hybrid the the quality of the seed the seed that you are uh, using for for producing the the plant let's talk for example in corn it's impossible on having a good corn silage if you don't choose uh, a good seed, a good corn seed, the seed will uh, will be transformed in a in a in a good plant, in a nice plant that will be transformed later in corn silage. So if you don't choose the right seed, uh, adequate for your uh, specifications, for your uh, agronomic parameters, for your climate. Uh, you, it, it, there is no miracle at all, so you're not going to have a good silage quality if you don't choose the right seed. The agronomic practice as well, uh, for example, the, the row distance, the fertilization, uh, the, the irrigation, I mean, how to transform this seed into a plant, into a plant that, uh, a good plant with energy, with fiber content that will become silage uh, uh, later. The climate as well, of course, the, the, the plants need energy from the sun, the, sun, the, the plants need water. Uh, climate is a, a huge parameter in order to, to, to have good, good silage quality. And as I talked to you before, harvest, storage and removal, the, the main factors uh, directly related with us, with JF, and uh, that's why we're going to, to talk a lot during these three last stages. And uh, let's discuss a little bit how is silage done, because uh, the goal here is making silage is just to preserve the nutrients of forage to use food in the future. OK, so uh, this happens because we are converting by fermentation the, the plant sugars into organic acids. So I'd like to say that it's just like pre preparing pickles from a cucumber. Okay, we are, we are, we are going to, to conserve, we are going to preserve the nutrients in an acid environment uh, and use them later. So, uh, how is silage well done? The, there are some factors that will interfere in this process, in the fermentation process that we need to take care. Of. And we're going to discuss this uh, a little bit during this presentation. These are the five main factors that interfere in the fermentation process that transforms corn into corn silage, the plant into silage, okay? 
The, 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 the biggest one, the main one, is forage moisture value, I mean the dry matter content, okay? We're going to talk a lot uh, what is the dry matter. The chopped granulometry, I mean the size of the particles from the, from the chopper, from the harvester. Uh, air exclusion, we're going to see that oxygen is probably the worst enemy from silage, so we need to remove it. Uh, the amount of carbohydrates, I mean starch, from the forage, okay? And the population of bacteria, whether natural or supplementary when needed. This is the, uh, a graph that shows us uh, some phases uh, from the transformation to, from uh, the plant into silage, okay? So you can see that we have uh, five phases, phase one, two, three, four, and five, which starts from day one, as soon as you are harvesting, to at least day 21. If everything goes right, you, you will need at least 21 days in order to this process being ended uh, for transforming the, the plant into silage. Uh, and and in the in the lines in the rows in here you can see some parameters that are very important during this transformation. So uh, this is the the oxygen uh, amount in the silo. This is the the bacteria uh, inside the silo. The temperature what's uh, what's happening in the, in the temperature in the with the temperature inside the silo and the pH. The pH is only a scale that shows us uh, how acid is silage inside the silo, okay? So as you can see, in phase one, that takes only one day, for example, in this, in this example, in this theoretical example. Uh, but before, it's, before we, uh, I speak uh, in phase one, it's important to, to start with the microbial growth. Uh, let's say there are two kinds of bacteria. We have some bacteria that needs oxygen to survive. They are called aerobic bacteria. And there are a second type of bacteria that doesn't need oxygen to survive. They are called the anaerobic bacteria. Uh, these bacteria that doesn't need oxygen to, to survive uh, is the, let's say, good bacteria that will create the acid environment that we need to preserve the, the food, okay? These two bacteria in here, the acetic acid and the lactic acid bacteria, they are converting sugar into acids, and these acids will uh, preserve all the, the food uh, later, okay? But in order to them to, to survive, uh, they are just like in a biological war and competing with these because this one are, let's say, uh, stronger bacteria and we need to take them off. And as they need the oxygen to survive, the idea in here is to remove the oxygen from the silo and then they will die later. So as you can see, why we don't, why we don't want these bacteria to survive. These bacteria, they are converting sugar and oxygen into CO2, heat, and water. And also they are, de they are degrading proteins. So uh, we do not want these bacteria to win this biological war. And as we close the silo, as we took off the oxygen from it, these bacteria will die. And then we, uh, the, the, these anaerobic bacteria will have the, the, the to survive. So uh, they, they are going to increase, increase their population, produce a little bit of acid. And as you can see, by the time the pH, I mean, the, the acid, the, the, the how acid uh, is the silo is going down. So it's becoming more and more acid. And uh, then these bacteria die, and then the lactic acid bacteria, they are going to, to proliferate silo. And let me just close this one. 
and uh, we can, uh, as these bacteria yeah, are, are increasing their population, look, they are converting sugar into lactic, uh, lactic acid, a little bit of acetic acid as well, because there is uh, some acetic acid bacteria in here. Uh, but when they are proliferating, the pH is dropping uh, day after day, day after day. Uh, when the pH reaches something around four, uh, these bacteria no longer can survive in this so acid environment, uh, which means that they, they are eating, these bacteria are eating, eating, producing more and more acid, and they, they kill themselves because they, they created a so acid environment, they cannot survive at all. So th this is the fermentation process uh, by the start, by day one until day 21, uh, when theoretically uh, everything uh, is finished. But uh, by taking a look at this graph, you can see the importance of closing uh, the silo as soon as you can, as fast as you can, because if you if you if you take more than one day to close the silo in this theoretical example, for example, uh, the aerobic bacteria will have more time to convert sugar, the oxygen available in the in the environment, and create CO two and create heat and water. So maybe these two bacteria will not have enough sugar to convert into the, the necessary acids to stabilize the, the, the silo. So it's very important to, for you to, to, to have this in mind, to close the silo as soon as you can. And uh, as I talked to you before, uh, there are some factors that uh, affect this fermentation process. Possible to continue. Microphone is Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, as we were talking before, uh, the idea in here that we have a window, a cutting window, uh, that on risk, uh, to respect this dry matter content from 30 to 35 percent. So here, uh, some people here in Brazil, what they do is to choose different kinds of seeds in order to reach this dry matter content uh, in different areas. So uh, because if if I'm talking to you that the dry matter uh, increases one percent per day. Uh, if we start on 30%, after five days only, you'll have the 35%. So you have only five days in order to, to do all the, the entire harvest. So what people here in Brazil, they choose different kinds of seeds uh, that reach the 30% 30, uh, 30 of dry matter earlier than the other. So in this example, the this farmer choose uh, three different kinds of seeds and the five days of window cutting 
uh, are transformed in this example in 10 days. So they have more time uh, for harvesting, respecting the dry matter uh, from 30 to 35 percent in order to have a better fermentation later. Uh, if, if we harvest with a low dry matter content, uh, we'll have low starch because the, the, the cobs are not well developed. They are not finished. Uh, we don't have um, uh, a lot of grains in the, in the corn, so in the, in the plant. So it means that, it means that uh, the, the plant is not yet fully ready for harvesting. And also, we'll have high loss of infiltration because there are there is so much water in the in the plant that when you are packing the 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 the, the, the chopped product, there there will, there will be a lot of loss of water, and this water is carrying with it a lot of nutrients as well. So we'll have a, a high loss of nutrients in this, and uh, the the worst of all. We will have a bad fermentation because of Clostridium bacteria. Clostridium bacteria is another anaerobic uh, kind of bacteria that compete with the, the, the other ones that I showed you before. And uh, they, they, they will degradate proteins, they will drop the, the, neutral, the nutrients uh, to, to a value very low. So uh, the, the animals won't eat this kind and, and it's very dangerous for them actually. So don't harvest uh, below 30% of dry matter. And uh, if you harvest with a high dry matter content, I mean, the, the plant is too dry, you'll have aerobic deterioration. And the most important, you'll have low digestibility of fibers and starch. I, I mean, the animals won't be able to absorb all the energy, all the, the, the starch, and the, the, the animals won't be able to, to absorb all the fibers that, that are present in the silage. Uh, and also, it's much more difficult on packing because it has what we call here in Brazil, uh, just like a spring effect. So the tractors that are, are pushing the, the, the silo to the, the, the silage into the silo, to, ex to exclude in the, the oxygen, it's just like a spring. You push it and it, the, the oxygen goes, up, uh, goes inside the silo too easily. So, uh, Ma Ma Mauricio, Ma Ma okay. Mauricio um, here's Rafael. Uh, just a little addition. Um, as, as you guys saw, um, it's very important um, the dry matter content to be in that window that uh, Mauricio said. Um, and the forage will dry quite fast from 0.5% to 1% per day. So it's very important when you choose a machine to cut it or to harvest it, you need to choose a machine, a reliable machine that doesn't break too much and a high productivity machine. Okay, uh, a fast machine that can chop as quick as possible, so you can uh, make sure your your forage is in between that harvesting and chopping window. Okay. Okay, Rafael. Thanks. Uh, so, uh, as uh, as dry matter is so important in order to have a good fermentation process. Uh, we need to, to determine it, uh, we need to know how to determine it. So uh, I'm going to show you three ways, three different ways in order to do it. The, the most used one is the, what we call here the, the milk line, this red arrow in here. So this, this milk line goes to the center of the cup as the grain majors. So generally speaking, when, the, when this milk line is from this half to three quarter from the grain, the dry matter content will be between 30 and 40%. So it's a, it's a fast way in order to, to determine how, uh, how is the dry matter content. 
but uh, it has the, 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 the biggest disadvantage of this method is in inaccurate. I mean, uh, if we are speaking that we need to know from 30 to 35 percent, uh, maybe there are another methods to determine it uh, quite well, quite better, let's say. So uh, another way of doing it, it's using a, a microwave oven. Uh, people here in Brazil use it a lot. They, they get a silage sample from the, from the harvester or from the chopper and they, they, they dry it first and then, uh, so, sorry, first they weight it uh, in, a, in a scale, okay, in order to know how, how is the weight on it and then they start drying it from small intervals to avoid burning and then they are uh, waiting again, they taking the weight, and then when the weight is const constant, they can divide the final weight to the, to the initial weight and know how much water uh, was gone from the sample and calculate the dry matter quite easily. Another way is using, uh, here in Brazil, we call the, the coster tester. It's just like a machine that does this, this same process automatically. Uh, you put a silage sample inside it, it has uh, a small oven, it takes the weight from the initial sample, and then they start burning, burning, not burning, they are removing the, the water from the sample, and when the weight is constant, it means that all the water is gone, and then this machine calculates the dry matter content quite easily, okay? So, uh, let's talk a little bit uh, more in corn, uh, just to, 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 for you to understand some difference and why corn is probably the, the most used plant for making silage, one of the best ones for, for making it. Corn can, can be divided in two, uh, two different uh, things, important things things that the animals need, the ruminants need. The fiber, the green part, let's say, the stem, the leaves, because they, they must stimulate the rumen, okay? They must stimulate the, the rumen from the, from the animals. And the corn has starch, the, the kernels on the cob, which means that corn have energy. This energy is, is related to the milk production later so the energy uh, it's it's ever uh, when we are speaking about starch we uh, think that the animals uh, it's directly related to the milk production later okay but we need to process them because the animals won't be uh, able to process to 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 break the kernels and absorb the starch from the from it okay so uh, let's talk initially on the fiber, on the fiber content. There is a, a concept called effective fiber because uh, this means that the fiber should be, uh, fibers, the corn silage should have fibers long enough to optimize rumination, but small enough to favor the packing on the silo and avoid segregation in the throw. I mean, uh, we need an interval just like the dry matter. Uh, we do not want uh, too small fiber and we don't want uh, too big fiber, okay? Uh, too small won't stimulate the rumen. Too big, the animals won't eat it and uh, it's difficult for packing in the silo. So who defines this concept of how big or how small is the fiber? Uh, this concept of effective fiber is what we call the Penn State particle separator. The Penn State particle separator is just a set of sieves from 19, 80 millimeters, 4 millimeters, and the bottom. Uh, there is a procedure that shows how to separate the sample, to shake in this set of sieves and weight uh, each of them. And uh, the Penn State University from the United States has conducted several studies and the best recommendation for corn silage has been achieved. 
when you when you took a sample from the from the harvester from the chopper the idea when we are talking about corn silage the ideal is to have three to eight percent on the upper sieve 45 to 65 percent in the the middle sieve which means that 45 to 65 percent is bigger than eight and smaller than 19 millimeters 20 to 30 percent uh, is bigger than four and smaller than eight millimeters and only 10% smaller than four millimeters. When you achieve these parameters in your harvester, in your sample, I mean, uh, it means that you, you, you choose uh, a good size in your machine, okay? So if you have a lot of product uh, on these seeds, uh, it means that you are harvesting too low, you are harvesting too small. Uh, if you have a lot of product, a lot of uh, a percent, a high percentage in this two, especially this one, uh, in this sieve, is, uh, it, it means that you choose a big size in your machine. So the, 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 the ideal size is to have these percentages in the in the in the spin state particle separator if you have this you'll have enough fiber to stimulate the rumen from the animals and uh, you'll have a, a good packing you'll have a lot uh, the, the enough uh, you'll have enough effective fiber to stimulate your animals okay and they of course they will eat it they will not segregate uh, this kind of food Okay, so, uh, but corn, actually, it has a start. A start is the energy stored in the plants, uh, and they are present in the grains. So the more grains, the greater the amount of starch. And as I told you before, it's directly associated with the animal's milk yield. The more starch, the more milk, okay? Mauricio, Mauricio, okay. Um, just one, one thing about uh the particle sizes that you just talked uh so it's very important when you choose a machine for cutting your forage you need to have a machine that has a very good control on the chopping process okay so if you have a machine that does not have a control or a precision on the chopping process you will get um not proper particle sizes or not proper particle size distribution okay so very very important when you're choosing a machine for chopping or harvesting your your silage or forage uh you choose a machine that has it is a precision machine okay this is very important in silage making rafael thanks for 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 this uh, adding because yes the, there are some kinds of machines that it's impossible to reach these values, okay? Uh, when, when the machine is not, let's say, precise, it will be impossible for, for these kind of machines to reach the target, to reach these values. Uh, and uh, the, as I told you, I work in engineering. I, I go to field tests uh, a lot of days per year. And what we do here in Brazil, is to get the, our harvester, our, shop, our shoppers, and we do these field tests, we do the Penn State particle separator test when we are uh, uh, evaluating every chopper, evaluating everything, and we know that our machines can reach these values if they are well set, if they are, if they are well sharpened. I'm going to discuss this with you later. But uh, the, uh, let's say, uh, it, it's possible for us to reach this value if the machine is well uh, is well adjusted, but there are some machines that cannot reach this value at all. Okay, so this is a very important comment that Rafael added to the to the presentation. Thank you, Rafael. So uh, taking talking back to to the starch the energy that starch in the in the plant uh, okay so as i told you the, the the starch is inside the grains 
and the grains, the animals cannot break the, the grains. They don't, they don't have enough teeth to, 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 to break them. So uh, it's the machine responsibility to do it, to, to process the, the, the grains uh, for making possible to the animals to absorb the, the starch, the energy in the grains. Uh, but how can we know if the kernels are well processed or not? Uh, it's impossible for us. Uh, for, uh, there are people, for example, that tell me, ah, no, I, I can see by my eye that this silage on, on this picture in here is well processed or not. So it's not uh, a lab way of doing it. It's not scientific way on analyzing if the, the starch is well or not processed. So uh, there are a lot of studies and they, the, the researchers developed what we called the KPS, the kernel processing score. This is uh, a, a lab test. This is a lab analysis that really will tell us if the kernel are well or not well processed. So uh, it's a machine that uh, they dry the sample, they take the, the sample to this machine and uh, they pass through this set of seeds and when the starch is smaller than 4.75 millimeters, uh, we, we can tell that the starch is smaller enough for the animals to absorb it. So when more than 75% of the sample, of the starch sample is smaller than 4.75 millimeter, we can tell that the, the kernel processing score is in an optimum value. Between 50 and 70, it's suitable, and less than 50%, it's inappropriate. It means that this kind of, uh, of uh, sample, uh, th this machine didn't break the kernels well. It didn't process the, the material well, so the, the animals won't be able to absorb all the energy that, they, that, that is uh, inside the sample, inside the corn silage. So the larger the KPS, the more the grain is processed, which means uh, it will be absorbed into, in, in, into the animals. This graph relates, uh, this is a very nice graph actually. It was a study made in the US, uh, which is relating the KPS from a sample, from the silage sample, and the fecal starch by, by uh, collected by the animals that ate this silage. So, as you can see, there are more than 50 farms in here. They measure the KPS from every one of them. The animals start eating this food, and then they, they measure the fecal starch of, the, of these animals, and they are relating KPS and fecal starch. So, as you can see, the bigger the KPS, the smaller the fecal starch. D this means that the, these kind of animals, they are really absorbing the starch and producing more milk. When the KPS goes down, the fecal starch goes up, which means the starch is not uh, being absorbed by the animals. It's going into the, their feces. So they're not producing the, the, how much as they can. Okay, that's, that's why it's so important for the machine to have a, a good KPS in order to make possible for the animals to absorb the, the energy that is inside your food. Okay, so uh, it's, it's the, the machine's responsibility to do it. The animals can't. So that's why we go to the field tests, we take samples, go to the, send to the lab, uh, check the KPS, okay, this is good or this is not, and we are developing our machines, we are improving our machines by the, the, the point of view from the animal, by the point of view from the, from the, from the silage quality, okay, not only for, for the operator as well, okay. Uh, okay, so let's talk a little bit of grass. Uh, the, the fermentation process to grass silage it's a little bit different from the corn silage. The idea is the same, but there are some differences that we need to take care. So why I'm talking this? Because 
When we talk about grass for Napier, for uh, elephant grass, the, 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 the harvest recommendation is just before flowering. Uh, because, and why was that? Uh, the, the, the flowering is not uh, digestible to the animals. So all the grasses from this, what you call the Poaceae grass family, Cuba 22, Napier, all these kind of grasses, uh, when the flowers appearing, appears, the digestibility of the, of the food, of the, of, of the grass drops too much, which means that uh, uh, the, the animals won't be able to absorb the, the fiber content. They will not be able to absorb the nutrients that is in the grass. So the ideal is to harvest before the flowering appear. But the problem is at this time, the dry matter content from, from the grass will be only between 20 and 25%. So as we've discussed before, this is too wet. If we try to, 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 make, for, uh, to make silage uh, with this uh, in this dry matter content too low, we'll have the same problems that we've discussed before uh, that happens with corn. A lot of water, uh, a bad fermentation. So we need to take care of this. And how can we do it? Uh, some people use mowers and they let the grass dry for a few hours to get the desired dry matter, okay? So they harvest before the flowering and let the grass dry in order to, to reach the desired value, but the, the disadvantages of this method are the losses because of the wind in the leaves, uh, okay, and uh, of course the cost of the machinery involved for, for this. Here in Brazil, an interesting solution is to use a byproduct uh, with high dry matter during the silage, so this byproduct would steal the excess of moisture optimizing the fermentation. So here in Brazil, depending on the, on the area, they use citrus pulp, wheat bran, soy shell, uh, even crushed corn, hay, uh, molasses in powder. They add this, this kind of product with the dry salad uh, and these this is very dry, okay? This, in these examples, they, 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 these products, these byproducts are very dry. So they will correct the dry matter from the entire uh, mass. So the idea in here is to use, for example, between five and 10% of the ensiled mass using one of these byproducts. And the, the, the dry matter from the entire uh, mass will increase from a, a, med, uh, a media of 20% to 30 to 35%, which will optimize fermentation. And some of these byproducts have also a good sugar content, which will further improve the quality of the silage. For example, the crushed corn. Crushed corn, it's early starch, it's energy. So uh, it's we, uh, if we add crushed corn in the in the grass silage, we are we are we are uh, let's say we are putting food for the bacteria to convert it into the acids that we need to preserve the silage. So that's why it's very important on adding this kind of products in order to correct the dry matter content and also uh, in this kind of of the crushing corn, for example, uh, putting a little bit more sugar that will improve the quality of the silage. Uh, but let's discuss a little bit also on the length of the cut, uh, because from corn silage, we've seen that the Penn State particle separators have uh, the, the target, okay? But uh, in, in grass, it's a little bit different. Uh, the idea is the same. Uh, cutting too big, cutting too big will make the animals to, to choose what they are eating and cutting too small will lose a little bit of the nutritional value of the forage. So 
what is the ideal size to big to small what is the the ideal size there is no uh, let's say official recommendation from the penn state particle separator for grass only for corn silage but uh, in, in general what is recommended is the ideal particle size must be around 30 percent of the particles to be retained on the 19 millimeter screen when this happens means that the, the grass silage will be uh, enough uh, fi uh, effective fiber for the animals. And uh, okay, so uh, another interesting aspect that you need to take care of is that tropical grasses, just like Napier, has, they have low density. So which means that it's expensive to transport from the, the harvest place to the silo. So when you reduce a little bit the particle size, you could increase the density uh, by approximately 25%, which will benefit the transportation and the logistics, which will make cheaper, okay? You are not transporting air, you are transporting uh, more grass if you cut a little bit small. So you need to take care uh, if you're harvesting uh, too much, okay? And especially if you are, uh, if if the the place that you are harvesting is it's away from the silo. So the JF's recommendation between corn and grass for just just like a a, a first uh, way on choosing the the speaking about harvesters mainly on corn from seven to nine millimeters and in grass from nine to 16 millimeters. When you do this, generally speaking, you will reach the target parameters for corn and for grass, uh, depending on, of course, on what you are harvesting, okay? This is just uh, a start parameter for you need to, to, to for, for starting, but the ideal is to check during the harvest for, especially if you have uh, a Penn State particle separator to see if you're doing good or not, okay? So right now I'm going to speak... Mar Mauricio. Okay. Uh, j just a little uh, parenthesis here. Um, for our uh, JF uh, Maximum uh, line, like JF40 Maximum, JF50 Maximum, and JF60 Maximum, um, we would uh, recommend for corn on 5 mm, okay? And for grass, it could be on 13 mm, okay? Just to um, put this model here on this, uh, on this particle sizes. So right now let's discuss some good practices in harvesting, uh, which will limit some losses and increase the quality of the silage. Uh, what he called the pre-harvest preparation. Uh, of course, the, when this, an empty silo will give you the opportunity to inspect it. So if you have those concrete silos, uh, the, the, the assets from the, uh, from the silage can even erode them, so causing infiltrations. So if you have an empty silo, it's the opportunity that you have to, to, to fix it. And of course, one of the most important things, check your machine, check the harvester, check the chopper, because the cutting window is too small. Remember that the, 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 the climate affects the dry matter content, the, the, the main variable of the silage. So uh, if you have a failure in your machine during the harvest, you will be in real problem. So the idea in here is to check the machine before the harvest starts, before the, 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 the chopping starts, okay? Then you will be able for, for doing it in the right time in order to get a better silage. Checking the cut during the harvest because uh, the same machine can have different results uh, overnight, okay? In, in, in our machines, the, the, the biggest things is adjusting the rotor, the, the, the blades rotor with the counter knife and sharpening the knives. These are the main checkpoints during the harvest that you need to take care. 
because if you do not sharpen the machines, if you don't adjust the rotor plates to the counter knife, the cut of the the cut will be will be worse, and the salvage will be in a in a worse condition by the end. So uh, the idea in here is do uh, for for you to to make some inspections during the harvest. Uh, it doesn't matter if you want to adjust the machine when the when the wind when the continuum window is gone. Okay, the idea in here is to to make this during the harvest when the machine is working. Okay, uh, of course, the larger presence of straw or cobs it uh, indicates that the machine needs sharpening and regulation. So. Uh, if you do this during the harvest, you are fixing, you are, in, you are increasing the, the, the cutting quality, which will uh, make, uh, uh, it's directly related to the silage quality uh, later, okay? So make the, the Penn State particle separator test during the harvest is also a great indicator. If you, are to, if you, did, if you have choose the, the right or wrong cutting size, Okay, these are some good tips to, to do during the harvest. Uh, the KPS, it's a lab test. It's a difficult way on measuring. There, there are places here in Brazil that are too away from a lab and they cannot uh, tell us if the, 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 the kernels are well or not processed. But there is a, 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 a let's say, a, a small procedure that you can use a one liter glass uh, of a genetic sample, play it on the surface and manually separate the whole grains or larger than 50% of a grain. And if in this one liter cup, if this one liter glass, you have less than two whole grains, you are okay. If you have more than two, you need to review the regulation of, the, of your machine. This is uh, just a fast way on analyzing if the, the corns are well or not processed to check if the machine needs or not a regulation, okay? The oxygen exclusion, as I told you before, the oxygen is the worst enemy from the silage. So after the harvest, fill the silo the fastest you can. The plant, the plant breathing continues after harvest until the oxygen is removed. So you need to pack efficiently. Uh, the density of the, of, the, of the mass in the silo depends on a lot of, of factors. For example, the, the tractor, the, the weight of the tractor, the, 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 the types of the, of the tires, the hours of packing, for example, the thickness of the compacted layer from the tractor, the dry matter content affects directly the, the oxygen exclusion. The feeding rate from the harvester, uh, we'll discuss this a little bit later. The, the height of the silo, there are some variables that, in, in, that, are, that, are, that are related to the ox, ox, oxygen exclusion. So, Mauricio, Mauricio, ju just oh, one addition here, uh, sorry. Um, here uh, in Brazil, it's very common uh, bunker silage, but in India, uh, there is a lot of, um, uh, people that make silage in bags and yeah. or, or bales. So uh, one very interesting uh, machine that uh, Vidata makes there is uh, the silo pack uh, 4D and, and, and 1D. Uh, I think if I if I don't um, if I remember uh, that has a hydraulic cylinder and this cylinder press down into the bag. So uh, this helps a lot in oxygen exclusion, okay, for having a better quality silage. Thank you. Yes, the, the, the idea is the same. Instead of using this huge uh, concrete silo, which uses tractors and, uh, of course, the, the, uh, a big weight on it, the, the, for, for making these small bags of silage, uh, it's a very good idea on packing efficiently, on removing the oxygen from inside of it. So it's a, it's a good way on, on making small fermentations 
uh, process or, or on each one of them. So it's a, it's a good way on, on making it because you are really excluding the, the oxygen from the, from the that environment, which will increase the silage quality later. Okay. So, uh, so ah, uh, just forgot to tell you, if you are using a, a big uh, silo, let's say, uh, there is a, a 350 rule, which is related to the, uh, we call it the 350 rule. You only need to multiply this value to the productivity of the harvester. In this example, for uh, if your harvest is producing for, uh, 40 tons per hour, uh, 40 plus 350, you'll have 14 tons, which should be the, the ideal weight of the tractor pushing the, the, the compacting the silo in 100% of the time at the, when the harvest is producing. So as you can see, there is a lot of weight uh, needed on, on excluding the, the oxygen from uh, a big silo. Okay, the dry matter content. Which this is, can be this can be divided into two or more tractors, right? Right. If we, for example, if we are using two tractors, where well, in this example we could use uh, seven tons uh, each tractor. Okay. Uh, okay. It's important also to keep the feed rate constant, which means that. Uh, when the trucks are, are uh, getting into the silo in a constant feed rate, uh, the trucks that contains the, the chopped uh, product, the chopped mass, because if, uh, if for example, uh, a lot of trucks arrives at the same time, it will be very difficult for the tractors for packing it at the same time because the volume is too, is too big for them. So the idea in here is to keep the feed rate constant in order for the tractors uh, get a good uh, compactation, a good packing, okay? The idea in here is to use these progressive layers in here from the back to the front with a slope of 30 or 40 degrees, okay? Uh, and here the importance of covering after packing. Uh, the, there are some people here in Brazil that they do everything right from the start by choosing the, the right seed, the practical parameter, the agronomical, the, the agronomical parameters, the, the climate, they choose a nice harvester, they harvest at the right time with the right size, they pack everything right, everything right, but in the end, they use a bad plastic quality and then uh, everything is gone because the sun, the, the, there will be uh, oxygen infiltration. The sun will, will also uh, uh, deteriorate, to deteriorate the, the plastic as well. So uh, everything is gone because he chose uh, a plastic of uh, not good quality. So that's why it's very important for, on taking care of every step, okay, for having good food in the end of the process. So everything must be sealed. Okay, the idea in here uh, is to take the oxygen off the, the mass, okay? So even on the sides, this is a study made in the US when they compared two silos. One of it was, uh, has plastic only on the top and the other one has plastic even on the sides. They used the same uh, corn, the, the same harvester at the same time, packing on the same way, and they compared how much uh, was, uh, has been spoiled uh, near the, the wall. Uh, so here the, the estimated dry matter losses near the wall for in this alfalfa bunkers in this example, only on the top, in the top six inches, uh, it loses 19% of dry matter. In the, in the silo that was 
covered even on the sides in the top six inches, less than 1%. So as you can see, uh, the, the, the people that use plastic even on the sides, they are investing in quality, but they will have more food at the end because it, it's not losses because of spoilage, okay? So uh, another thing that is very important is the influence of silage time because uh, it's very important. I've told you that the minimum of 21 days, it will be the, the theoretical uh, value for it, but uh, I would recommend minimum, minimum 30 days, okay, for the, for, because it's very, very difficult for the people, for example, to close the silo on day one. So uh, just for safety, uh, I would recommend you at least 30 days. But uh, if I had the opportunity, I would, I would wait six days for it. And why was that? The longer the silage is stored, the higher, of course, the, the higher the costs, However, uh, the, the digestibility of the start, the digestibility of the fiber, uh, there will be a greater amount of nitrogen, there will be greater uh, solubility of the protein, the quality of the silage will be better. And also even the KPS is, is bigger if you have stored the, 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 the silage for more time. So the, all the parameters the, uh, for, uh, for silage quality uh, are increased if you start uh, with more time. So I would recommend you, if you have the possibility, uh, 60 days for opening the silo, okay? And these some final considerations. Uh, we've talked about grass, we've talked about corn, uh, both of them, which one would be the better? Uh, I understand that corn is uh, a complete food for the animals. It have the energy, it have the fibers, but both of them are great sources of food to use the year round. Uh, in my opinion, uh, which one of them? The best food is the one produced in your farm with your management because the homemade food has your settings, your decision-making capacity, and the most important thing, it has your love. So keep in mind that improving silage quality will increase your milk production and investing in JF is a guarantee of quality in your food and consequently more profitability for your business. Thank you. That's why, uh, that's what I was I would like to, to share with you. I hope you liked it. Uh, and right now, maybe we can, we can see some questions and answer it if, if we have time. I, I don't know uh, if, if we have enough time to, to do it. It's up to you, Mr. Vishal. Yeah, uh, some people are asking about the Napier grass, that uh, what is the cut size is best to cut for Napier? for silage. Let me see if I understand well, the, the, uh, for, for, for measuring the dry matter in Napier silage. Yes, for Napier si silage, how is a Napier silage, they can make it better. In Brazil, no, they I, I, think, I think they asked about the cut size, the cut size for, for Napier. Yes. Uh, the cuts in, 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 in JF machines, I would recommend between 9 and 16 millimeters. Okay. This would be the, the start uh, that I would choose uh, from 9 to 16, maybe something around it. Uh, but uh, the, the best would, would have a Penn State particle separator and see if, the, uh, if in your situation with your Napier, uh, if we have the 30% retained in the 19 millimeter sieve. So, but I would think uh, initially, I would think around nine to 16 millimeters would be my initial uh, start.
that means the JF Maxim series, it has 13 millimeter. So you recommend for Napier 13 millimeters. The, the, the millimeters, yeah, yeah, 30 millimeters could be a, a, a good way of starting it. Uh, it's good, yeah, okay. 13, uh, nine millimeters in the case of harvesters, for example, or something around nine to 16, it would be good. 13, it's a, it's a nice way on, on starting it. Okay, and one another person, Mr. Sunil Sharma is asking about the when there is rainy season, they make silage at the rainy season. So what do you recommend in the rainy season, how they can make a silage in rainy season? Do you want to say something, Rafael? Because uh, you're... No, yes, uh, when in, there India, is Mauritio, rain. in Mauritio, there is the, the monsoon uh, season where there's a lot of rain. So in, in, in some places, by the harvesting time, it can rain a lot. So um, what would be the recommendation? Uh, do they need to um, wait uh, a little bit for drying out the plant or can they can they um, uh, uh, cut just after rain or, or how, how should it, should they add something? Should they add some uh, byproduct to, to uh, lower the, the moisture? In the case of grass, uh, in my opinion, uh, we should wait uh, to harvest uh, when, the, when, the, when the grass, when the napier grass in this example, uh, has uh, when the flowers don't appear. So uh, the, the, in, my, in my opinion, we should wait until the harvest, until the, just a little bit before the flowering appear because uh, we know that the flowering will drop the digestibility of the grass uh, too much. So, uh, and then correct the, the dry matter content by using the, for in this, as people do here in Brazil, some byproducts to, 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 to improve the, to increase the, the dry matter content. And in this case, the uses of inoculants with, uh, in, the, in grass, for example, it's a nice way, it's a good way to optimize the fermentation as well. Because as the, in, in corn, the conditions for having a good fermentation are, 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 are better, are, are easier, let's say, to, to have a good fermentation. When we reach 30 to 35%, the plant has a good digestibility, the dry matter is good for the fermentation, so it's easier to, to make ferment, uh, a good fermentation and optimum fermentation in corn. Uh, in grass, the, the, the main thing we should start uh, thinking on the digestibility, which means that we need to harvest before the flowering appear, and then correct the dry matter by using some byproducts or people that uh, leave the, the, the grass in the, in the ground for, for drying it, which, which in India, as I can see, it's a difficult way to do in it because it's raining. So it would be impossible for drying the, the, the grass in the ground. So the, the uses, uh, by using a byproduct and by using inoculants in these cases would be the, the best idea on, on harvesting before the flowering and correcting the dry matter on inoculants and these uh, dry byproducts on, for optimizing the, the fermentation process. Okay, thank you. What, 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 what do you recommend on, on corn um, if it's raining or, or it just stopped raining? The, in corn, the idea is on collecting the, the dry matter, the assemble, and collecting uh, and checking the dry matter from the from the from the corn. Okay, uh, people here in Brazil, they they what they do is when when the rain starts on the uh, on the on the field, for example, they wait for 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 the rain to to finish, and as soon as they can, they go to the field uh, and harvest because 
the, the sun will, the, the, the plant is getting older, let's say, so the dry matter will go down if it's raining or not. Sorry, the, the dry matter will go up if it's raining or not in the plant. They are getting wet, but the plant itself, it's, it's been developing. So the dry matter is going up. So the idea, uh, if, the, if the time for harvesting arrives and it's raining, the raining will make difficult for the harvest because of the, the wet ground for transportation of the, of the tractors, for trucks, everything. So what they do is to wait until they can for, for a good ground condition and then uh, uh, as fast as they can go to the field and uh, harvest it, okay, uh, just because of it. One, one question, um, if uh, you have a wet material just after rain or even if it's a light rain, can you wait a little bit more um, for a higher uh, content of dry matter as you're going to have more water in it? No, because, no. Uh, yeah, it's not related because the, the, when you push it with your tractors, for example, this water that it's not in the inside, let's say, the plant will drop too easily. So the, the way on yeah. that... On the, the rainwater the will flow out. Yeah. So that means for the rainy season, they need to uh, squeeze out the water out. In, in, uh, sorry, in maize or grass? In, in grass, in my opinion, we should wait for the flooring if the uh, and the uh, harvest uh, before the flooring appear. It doesn't matter, uh, let's say, the, the rain. The, the most important is to, to harvest before the flowering. Okay. I think, I think Marisha is saying that the rainwater will not matter too much. Uh, because if, if you are chopping or harvesting this, this water that's outside the plant, the rainwater, will be uh, it will be will slide away from the plant okay 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 and uh, somebody is asking that uh, the silage bags can be stored outside in the sun depends on the quality of the of the plastic mainly there are people here that do this in Brazil I won't. I as if I have the possibility, I would uh, storage them in a covered place, but uh, because uh, it, it's more safe, okay. Uh, but uh, depending on the silage of the, on the quality of the plastic, it could be done. We have those silage bags, the silage baggers, isn't it, Rafael? The machines that makes those. Uh, how can I say it? The, the silage. Sausage. Sausage. Like sausage. 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 Yeah, thank you. Uh, th that uh, goes to the uh, on, on outside, let's say. But uh, of course, it takes uh, a management for taking care of it because an animal can, can make some holes or the sun can, can, if the plastic is not good, the sun will, will, will cause you some problems. But the, if I have the, when talking in small bags, if I have the possibility on storing it in a covered place, I would do it. If not, I would choose a, a, a good plas plastic, make some, some tests, let some, some of them in the sun and see what happens. But if the plastic is good, it, you will have no problem. You okay. only need to care if some animals uh, make some holes or, or on it, uh, because they do. Okay, thank you for this answer. So, okay. Well, if, if, if we have more questions later, we can, Rafael can send me, we can make another day on, on, on answering them. There is no problem for me. Okay. So, should we... Uh, Finish this uh, presentation now. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay, then I, I would like to say thank you, Mr. Michel. Thank you for everyone that is watching us on the Facebook from, from you. It's a pleasure on, on speaking with you. Uh, uh, the, the time is not good because of the pandemic, but uh, we are we are away, but the technology makes us yeah. close. It can it permits it allows us for being closer with you and helping you uh, the way we can. So it's a pleasure on speaking with you. Thank you again, Mr. Michel, all your yeah, thank team, you. all your support, and be safe. Thank you, Mr. Rafael, and thank you, Mr. Rashid. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you.